If you've looked into budgeting, money management or investing your money into the stock market, then the chances are you've come across the term financial independence. In this video, we're going to look at what exactly financial independence means, how we can achieve it using passive and active income, and then lastly, the three different levels there are for financial independence and what the differences are. Hi, my name's Katie, welcome if you are new here. I make videos based on the things that I learn on my journey throughout life. So, financial independence. Being a financially independent essentially means that you have enough money to cover your living expenses for the rest of your life without earning an active income. So let's look a little bit deeper into this. What is an active income? This is any money that you earn for performing a service and exchanging your time for money. So the most common example of an active income is a job where you turn up for a set amount of time and you get a set amount of money for your efforts. It's essentially doing an action for money. The drawback to active income is that you are limited to human capability and time. You can only work so hard and so fast in the time that we have. So taking this back to financial independence, this is being able to live without having to give up your time in exchange for money. But financial independence is often associated with a passive income. A passive income is income that you make that doesn't require your time or energy. You could call it a background income and usually involves a computer of some sort because it's not limited to human capability and it sort of just chugs along earning you money while you're out living your life. Some examples of passive income could be having adverts on a blog or website and that you earn money depending on how many visitors you have to that site or alternatively having an online course that you sell that people can download off their own accord. Now these examples do require some time and energy to get them started, but the key difference is, is that passive income is not limited to how many you can produce and therefore sell, whereas active income is. Now, investments are also seen as a passive income because they can grow in value without any effort on your behalf. And this is why you often see the stock market and financial independence often being used in the same sentence. Now, there are a few ways in which a person can become financially independent. Firstly, is just by having enough money that you can live without having to make any earnings at all. Secondly, there is the passive income route where you are still earning money but not actually working for it as such. And lastly, also you can live off your investments off the stock market. And I think the majority of people have a mix between living off their investments and also having a passive income as well. So we've already talked about passive income and some examples of what that could be. So now let's look at how you can live off your investments. Firstly, many companies pay out dividends to its shareholders as a reward for putting your money into their company. And the average rate of dividend yield is around 2%, although it can reach up to as high as 10%. And this is usually paid annually. Secondly, people sell off small amounts of their investments as time goes by, with the idea being that they only withdraw however much their investments have grown by in that year. So for example, if they have grown by 5%, then they will withdraw 5% of their total investment amount. Now there are two things to be aware of here. First is that your investments are obviously not guaranteed to grow every year and it might not be enough for you to live off. And secondly, there is the rate of inflation to consider that if you make a 5% growth and inflation rate is 2% that year, then you're actually only getting 3% to live off. Okay, that's what financial independence is. Before I go, I just want to talk about the couple of other different levels that there are to financial independence. So firstly, there is financial security, and this is very similar to financial independence, but one step down. And this essentially means that you have enough money to cover your bases, so your house and your bills, for example, but with no extra spending money, so you can't live comfortably, but you have enough to survive. And then there is also financial freedom, which is one step above financial independence. This is where your balance and your income covers your ideal lifestyle. So how much would it cost to essentially live your dream? It means that you have enough money to not feel like you are restricted by money in any way. Very hard to put a number on this. I'm curious to find out what you think that your financial freedom number would be. How much money do you think you would need to be able to feel like you are not restricted in any way? 
let me know and thank you for watching for today's video next week we're going to be looking at the fire movement and how to calculate your financial independence number using the stock market